Peace. My name is Jasmine and this is my journal. Welcome everyone. I know it's been a while since I've been on here. Um, I don't know if it's been like maybe my last journal. It, it may have been a few weeks and I know um, most of y'all are used to receiving like multiple entries from me, but I had to take a break. Um, I'm going to be transparent with y'all since this is my journal. Depression been whooping my ass and <laughs> It's been with my ass since like November. Like, I don't know. I just, my birthday was coming. My birthday came in November. I turned 40 and I was just not happy about turning 40. You know, I just, I just look at my kids. They're getting older. They'll be leaving me one day. Look, my youngest is seven. That's how you know when you depressed and you be overthinking in your mind, you be thinking about bullshit for real. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're getting older, you're gonna leave me. My baby's seven, <laughs> she got forever, like, you know, and I was looking at that and I'm like, I'm 40, I'm not married. Like, am I gonna be one of them little old ladies? Well, I already, I'm, I got two cats now. I almost took a third cat, you know? So I was just depressed about that. I've just been depressed. And sometimes I be depressed about nothing. So like, it has really been um, the past um, few months. So I'm coming out of that. Well, no, I'm, no, I'm lying to you guys. I'm still kind of in the thick of it, but I am actively working on it. Um, I was in therapy. I decided to go with another therapist because I didn't feel like my therapist was helpful. So um, I just haven't found one yet. And, you know, I'm, I'm ass backwards. So when I'm depressed, I haven't been doing what's been helping my depression in the first place, which is the journaling and the meditation. You know, I'm not going to say I fell off from the meditation, but I'm not meditating as not much. And the journaling, um, I just haven't been journaling. I did a journal entry the other day, and that was my first entry in weeks. You know, I just really, I've been slacking. so. Amongst all that, some really good things happened. Um, I was surprised at work. I got a really, a really big raise, a significant raise at work, which was, which is good. More money is always good. Business has been pretty good. Um, the best news for me actually is that I actually had the honor of um, hosting my very first. Is this thing hooked up right? Yes, hooked up right. I'm sorry. I had the honor of posting my very first mediumship class. Sorry, I got all types of pops up pop ups on this computer. But I had the honor of um, posting my very first mediumship class. Shout out to my teacher, Indra Ali. Um, I'm in one of his groups called Spiritual Accelerator. Um, SpiritualAccelerator.com. Check it out. Um, it's a spiritual group. We have people on all levels from beginning your spiritual journey to mastery in this group. And we just all get along. And what I like about this group is that we just we just created a network. We're like family. And there's just there's somebody in there that does something. There's people that are gardeners, master gardeners, master herbalists, um, people that are really good with finance finances. And they're like, financialists, whatever you call them people. We got all types of people in that group. You know what I mean? You know, I'm medical, I'm a nurse and I'm a medium. And then there's other groups. This is, there's just all types of specialties and people's and people in this community. And like, we just be helping each other out. It's just a great space to be in it, to connect with people. And a lot of us have formed, I can say that all of the friendships that I have in my life right now, except for two of my close childhood friends, they came from this group. And it's just super dope. Um, I just love it. So he let me trial my very first um, mediumship class in there because I want to teach mediumship. And it went extremely well. Uh, I was nervous, but I had already created curriculum years ago because I just felt compelled to do so. I didn't know what I was going to do with the curriculum I created. What's this? I didn't know what I was going to do with it. That's why I don't like doing camera because I be seeing stuff and catching stuff. Okay, but 
I was already I already had some curriculum made, but, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I was going to use it actually for my mentorship students, but I had noticed that most of my mentorship students they didn't want to be mediums. They just wanted like spiritual mentorships, like to um, focus on like uh, spiritual development, like psychic work or just their own individual spirituality. Nobody really wanted to be a medium or felt had the confidence because it takes a lot of confidence to be a medium. So it just, I could, I realized that I can teach it all day. And I realized that I have a knack for teaching. I'm really good at it. And I'm not saying that like with my ego, but um, I have a way of conveying the information that people can learn it because it's hard to teach mediumship. Mediumship is something that's not easy to teach because either you have it or you don't. So, and it takes time to develop. So I really enjoy this. I can't wait. The next class is February 15th. So I'm excited about that. So that's, that's some good, a lot of great things came out of here. Now for year 2023, I told myself I was going to put all my focus into pouring into those that pour into me the most, those that are closest to me. Because sometimes I'm pulled in so many directions that I might take the relationships and the friendships and the connections closest to me for granted because I'm always somewhere else doing something. So most of my time now is dedicated to my children, um, even my grown children. I have just been intentionally making time for them. And I've been having a ball. I have a grandbaby coming in April. So I have to go and talk to my daughter's belly. And I spend time with my grandson. Been hanging with my two youngest daughters and my um, 18-year-old son. And then whenever my 23-year-old son's in town, I try to spend time with him. But I've been making it real intentional just to love on and spend time with my children. And also, you know, my close friends friends like uh, my best friend Tish she's been out on here a few times shout out to her and some of my closer friends just really making time for them because they've always poured into me even in my lowest times you know especially people that knew me before I was jazz the medium and I was just crazy ass bridge burning fucking shit up jazz <laughs> you know they knew me then and they rock with me now so just making intentional time for them, you know, because they, they know the old jazz and they've always been in my corner. So I've been doing that. And I just, I've been loving it. You know, what I've also been doing though is removing energy. That's just not quite serving me right now. And when I say that, I don't mean it personally. And it's not like I'm calling people on the phone and be like, Hey, you know what? You're not serving my space right now, so I'm just going to cut you off. I'm just kind of stepping back. And, you know, it's nothing that other people did personally. Kyla, baby, I'm recording, honey. Kyla, I'm recording, honey. She's kicking it with me tonight. But um, it's not anything they did personally, but I think I'm being pulled too many ways. I'm kind of pulling some of my energy back and kind of focusing on family and close friends and things like that and putting all my focus into my spiritual work. So a lot of my work has been going into that. And I've actually been feeling a lot better despite um, the depression, because we all know, especially people that suffer from depression, that you can you can still have great things going on and still feel sadness or depression. Um. I did come out of my cool the other day a little bit because I was minding my black ass business and my name was bought into something. And, you know, a friend of mine had some, well, I thought was a friend, had some so-called, night, you know, not very nice things to say, but um, apology was issued. It's, it's over with. But, you know, I, I came out, of, I, I got in my feelings for a second there, but um, I was able to pop right back out. It's just that depression has been riding me. And funny, when I sat down and I thought about it, my 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 hurt or my pain really had nothing to do with that person. I'm just depressed. So anything triggering is just bringing the fact that I'm depressed to the surface. You know, my, my depression is seasonal. Uh, when I was younger, 
I have been off medications like antidepressants and I'm open with you guys. I've been off of antidepressants for years um, because when I stepped into spirituality, I realized that the medications, it, to me, I just feel like I didn't read as clear when I was on antidepressants. At one time for pain, because I have chronic leg pain, they had me on some Volta, which is clinically an antidepressant. Um, because of the lupus and I have fibromyalgia, I would take that. And I just felt like when I would read, I was still able to read, but I felt fuzzy. So when I didn't take it, I read just fine. So what I decided to do is just kind of work on myself, meditation, and I'm still, yeah, I'm still a work in progress, but I did all that stuff to wean myself off and successfully, I have not been on any medications for probably six years now. I haven't been on anything, so I've been rocking it out. But um, I was even earlier this year, I had a real bad bout, maybe about mid-year. I had a, a horrible bout of um, depression. Matter of fact, my deepest depression is what started this podcast. I was at a low point. You know, I was almost suicidal. So that started this podcast. That was last year. I mean, last year um, that started this podcast, but started doing better. And then I'm now in my seasonal depression, which is around the winter time. So let's talk about why depression is more common in the winter time. Number one is cold. So you can't leave the house as much. You're not getting as much sun. I don't think people realize how vital the sun is and how much vitality the sun gives us. Um, depression is more prominent in places where the sun isn't as prominent. At. Did y'all know that? The sun is extremely important. So when you don't go out in the sun a lot, that's why certain people use like special lights to help with depression because that's important. Um, so the sun and also the reason why it's colder in the winter is because when the sun, when the earth rotates the sun in those three winter months, it's a little bit further from the sun than it usually is in the summer months, which means that the earth doesn't rotate around the sun in a perfect circle. It's more like an oblong type of thing. It's like it's closer to the sun in the spring and summer months, and then fall and winter, it gets a little further apart, then it comes back around. So during those months, when the sun's a little bit further away from us, because we are connected to the sun, we are stardust, we are of the sun. When the sun's a little bit further away, we feel that. So a lot of us, we might be a little bit more down than we are during that, that time. Another thing is Holidays. All of our holidays are in the winter time, Christmas, Thanksgiving. So for those who have loved ones, and I'm getting tearful, we have loved ones that we miss. It's hard. You know how hard it is going through like a Christmas and a Thanksgiving without my mom, and that was our thing. So imagine people out there who lose spouses, kids, um, kids' parents, family members, friends, or people that they love dearly. And they're doing the holidays without them. The holidays can be extremely difficult for some people. Also, since we're so connected to the sun and the environment, it stimulates how, her, how, how our brain releases neurotransmitters. And we need certain neurotransmitters to stay balanced. And I think serotonin is one of those neurotransmitters. But I ain't getting on here to be scientific. But sometimes that shit be imbalanced. And when it's imbalanced, you feel a little sadder. And that's why they have, um, you know, SSRIs and antidepressants like Zoloft and um, they got the, oh, I'm not going to go through them because I'm getting, I'm starting to get a uh, fuzzy, I am off the top of my head, or triptyline. I don't know what, I forgot, uh, is it try? The, the, y'all don't hope me getting to remember, trying to remember all these, but there's several classes of um, antibi I mean, the antidepressants, but I just know I'm just talking about the SSRIs because me and one of the doctors was talking about SSRIs today because she prescribed Zoloft for somebody. But that's pretty much um, what's going on around this time. So usually my depression will start to get better um, about spring, summertime. In the meantime, there's things that I can do to keep it better, like keeping busy, working, being creative making podcast videos, card videos, loving on my family, loving on other people's kids because I like kids. It's funny because sometimes I don't like kids, but I like kids because I feel like, I don't know, I'm iffy with kids. Sometimes I like kids and sometimes I don't, just to be, but kids like me, so. 
you know what? I think in every single lifetime I've ever been in, I was somebody mama. I just feel like even when we play house as kids, I always had to be the damn mama. Like I'm the mama. I was the mother. I just think that I, you know what? I think that like I have a responsibility. Like, so, you know, when we pass away, right? Our soul, we have work to do. We go to another place. I feel like I'd be going to the spirit world and I'd be, I'd be, I got kids up there and I'd be watching kids, like kids, spirits or kids, souls and prepping them to come here. I, I do. I just got a feeling like I run the damn daycare and it's crazy because, or I like, no, you know what? Cause I got this healing thing going on. I bet in, in the soul world, I take care of souls that are like hurt or they need to rest or they need to be healed from something or they, you know, your, your soul can, you can't like hurt your soul and it might need like some reconfiguring. You can't destroy it, but it can't be damaged. But so you could do some reconfiguring and you send them to this place of rest. Like you took a beat and during this lifetime and you pass away, when you go to the spirit world, you go rest somewhere. During that rest, you kind of like rebuild it back up because, you know, Earth will jack you up. Earth is ghetto. Earth will jack you up. You go over here to this place and you you, you get your factory reset. And then you, I want to say factory reset because there are souls who are like so damaged. They have to be like reconfigured completely. But and you come back and this is just what I'm thinking when I'm guessing my um my theory, but it, some of it, it also comes from books. Like I'm reading a book by Dolores Cannon right now called Between Death and Life. And I've, I've read several of um, Dr. Michael Newton's book. You hear me talk about him all the time. On like the things that the soul have to, has to do between this life before they incarnate back into the next life. So I think it's like pretty dope. <sighs> so I wanted to share a dream with you guys before I get out of here. It was an interesting dream because, uh, and I, I had told uh, my mentor Ali about it in our class, but I had a dream that, um, side note, I have been doing my attunement to higher consciousness by type bro. It ain't no joke. I'm like, I think we finished up. I'm a little, I'm like one day behind. So tonight will be my last night and, um, we'll be finished up. And um, it's like 13 attunements and it takes like four or five months to do them and give, give myself a pat on the back for finishing because I'm the queen of not finishing shit. But I finished it and my dreams be off the chain. But I had a dream that I was in this. It was futuristic. I was we was riding through the city. It looked real futuristic. I was sitting in the back seat of the car. Right. And in the front seat of the car, it was. Uh, dream dude and if you don't know who dream dude is go back and listen to earlier episodes it's just this motherfucker that be haunting my dreams um i kicked him out of my dreams for a long time he hasn't been back in a while but as of the past month he done been in about 10 or 15 dreams it just seemed like he left my dream for some my dreams for some months make it a pop-up visit every once in a while and he is back in my dreams with a vengeance i'm tired I am tired. I'm tired of seeing your face in my dreams. But he was in this one. Anyhow, we both looked younger. And I know for a fact, like in this reality here, his hair is cut really, really, really low. And he always keeps his head covered. But in that reality, he had like shorter hair, but it was curly, real soft and curly. But he was still super chocolate and he had a beard, you know. And then I was there and I looked like my 18 year old self. I was much thin. I was real thin when I was, I know, I know it's hard to believe now, like, you know, a little voluptuous, but I was much smaller. And I remember I was in the front seat cry crying and I'm like sitting in the back seat watching him and my younger self. And he was holding my hand and he was like, Jazz, like, why are you crying? I have not left you. I've been with you forever. I've been with you since was kids. What you scared of? And I was crying and I was like, you abandoned me. I keep dreaming that you're going to abandon me. You're going to leave me. You're hurting me. He was like, I didn't leave you. And I was like, but you do in my dreams. And he was driving. So this, this man turns around and he looks back at me. Well, they're not supposed to be seeing me because I'm watching it. He looks back in the backseat at the me now and says, whatever you're doing in this dimension, you messing up everything in these other dimensions. So whatever you're doing over there, you need to stop. So I wake up out of my sleep 
true story. When I wake up out my sleep, my ring light just pops itself on like bing. So I'm like, and it popped itself up on a rainbow um, function. The tricky thing about my ring light is that in order to get to the rainbow setting, you got to press a few buttons. It, this ain't no, that, that rainbow setting ain't no one click button. You got to press like three buttons to get to the rainbow setting. It just pops on a rainbow setting. So then I wake up and I'm like, so when I meditated on it, I saw myself tossing stones. And you know, you toss, your st- toss a stone across a pond and then it ripples, it'll ripple out and each ripple will go into the other ripple. So I realized that um, whatever we do here, it affects other places. I just got to figure out what I'm doing here that's jacking up everywhere else because I don't know what I'm doing. It could be anything. But I feel like I've been good lately. I think the most I've been doing is detachment work. Maybe I need to change the focus of my detachment work. Instead of detaching from people or a person, maybe there's an emotion that I need to detach from. I got some serious abandonment issues. And if y'all don't know about my abandonment issues, I told y'all last episode, I ain't talking about them no more. Go back and listen to the beginning. There's like 51, there's like 50 some episodes and they're not all on YouTube, but a lot of them are on Spotify. All of them are on Spotify. Just go back to Spotify. (laughs) Just listen, just give me some views if you want to. But listen, I told y'all all about my trauma in the beginning and I ain't gonna talk about it now. I might tell y'all stories here and there, but that's enough. Um, but I think I have, I have an extensive history of abuse and abandonment and neglect. And I think I might have to detach from that specific emotion, not people. So when I do my detachment rituals next month, I'm going to focus on that emotional, that emotion that feeling or whatever it is because I felt abandoned. I kept telling him in the car, like, hey, you abandoned me, bruh. You abandoned me. But I kept telling him that in the car. So the way my teacher explained it, he was like, even though that 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 form of that male is that person that you know, that's not that person because your dreams ain't got nothing to do with that person. So this dream person that keep on popping up my popping up in my dreams. And it's crazy because I started dreaming about him before we even became friends when I had only met him once before that. He really has nothing to do with my dreams. And I don't know whether he pops up in my dreams and it's just him because he's chocolate and he has a beard and I love chocolate. Charlotte. Yes. Maybe that's the reason why, but it ain't him. So I got to get the person out of my mind. Like, okay, I had a dream. It ain't him. It's just what an attractive male looks like. If if I had to picture an attractive male, he's probably what my subconscious is like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But it's not per se him, I guess. Yeah, look, this shit is confusing. I think I need to program my subconscious to change it to somebody else, like Morris Chestnut or something. Let me have some dreams about Morris Morris Chestnut, or I don't know, but you know what? I think sometimes I be thinking Carlos Miller, the comedian, he be looking kind of good to me. That be I like a beard. So I need a a big ass beard. You know, just something somebody else but that person. Cause I'm sick of dreaming about that motherfucker. Well, I think I'd be stroking his ego if he knew how much I dreamed about. I'm like, you know, I'd be dreaming about you. I, he know I'd be dreaming about him because I told him before, but I bet you I'd be stroking this man's ego just for nothing. I'd be stroking his ego for the free. It's like, now he probably tired of my ass too. But, um, yeah, so what you do in this dimension can affect other dimensions. Think about that before you go do a murder and speed sprees. Yeah. But that was an interesting dream that I was able to, um, the way Ali said it was, I was able to receive a message from my higher consciousness. So I thought that was pretty freaking dope. So anyway. I know this journal entry was all over the place, but y'all know me. I just go where my thoughts go. And that's how I've been feeling. 
until the next time. I hope you're continuing to love on yourself. I took myself out over the weekend and got my nails done. Soft pink, you got my toes done to match. That's my favorite place to go. Yeah, I like the nail shop. I usually buy myself flowers. I need to buy, I ain't buy myself flowers in a while. I need to buy myself some flowers. Flowers, I'm gonna go buy me flowers tomorrow. But um, do some self care over the weekend. Um, you know, went to the bookstore, bringing my toes, and my nails done. Went and um, I had stopped getting readings for a while, but I went to uh this lady named Nancy. Shout out to Nancy Stewart for uh, she's got um a shop called Crossroads Magic. If you're in Ohio and Monroe at Traders World, she's in Building Nine. She is the dopest. Um, she gave me a reading, so shout out to her. Um, if you want to visit her shop, if you're in Ohio, you can visit her, but it was a dope experience. And then I went to the nail shop and relaxed and got my nails done. And then um had dinner with some friends at Oriental Walk, who was delicious. And that was my self-care day. So take a self-care day. Tell yourself you love yourself. Love on yourself. Make love to yourself every day. Yeah, <laughs> make love to yourself. Hug on yourself. Look at yourself naked. Enjoy all your curves. Look, in my little depression, the past three months, I gained 10 pounds. I'm loving these 10 pounds. And I lost four of them back, though, because I'm back in the gym. I'm back to eating really healthy. I don't lost four pounds already, so I ain't playing with this way. I ain't playing. But love on yourself. 11 times in the morning, 11 times before you go to bed, in the mirror, don't blink. Look at yourself. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.